Next on the list, I want to quickly mention and give a shout out to fucking Ari Lennox. Big up fucking Ari Lennox because there was a period on that, on social media. I don't know when it was. I think it might have been maybe, I don't know, maybe a few years ago. Maybe it was during the pandemic. I feel like during the pandemic, for whatever reason, maybe it was a contract, maybe it was just a music industry, maybe just life. Ari Lennox was kind of crashing out online. She feel like everywhere, everywhere she was going, she was going into some sort of like into some sort of like bickering and some sort of argument. She was, I don't know, um, going crazy on social media. She was having arguments. I remember with some South African radio sh radio show or something like that. She was just going through a tough time online, innit? and it seemed like everybody was kind of getting on her back. And um, obviously um i guess at the time as well she kind of announced that she was gonna i guess when it got when it got really really bad sorry she took a break from social media and then announced she was going to get healthy and become sober right because that was obviously something that was getting um uh, getting her in a lot of trouble and i remember that i think the final straw i think for her might have been that flight she took she took some flight somewhere i remember she there was a story that she got kicked off a flight because she got too drunk and got too belligerent and shit so obviously that was i'd imagine kind of embarrassing and shit so she decided to kind of fix up her life and the reason why i'm going to break this up is because a lot of people talk about changing a lot of people talk about doing the work a lot of people talk about therapy and all this sort of stuff but usually i feel like some people use that as like a an emotion an emotional i won't say an emotional crux but they use it as some sort of manipulation tactic so that you don't call them out on their shit anymore like if you say i'm doing the work i'm going to therapy no you, you kind of make it seem as if like you're you've acknowledged the problem or you haven't really so it's a bit it's a bit weirdly manipulative but ari lennox didn't do that she did the work silently went away and first of all changed her body lost a ton of weight looks incredible now um always always looked incredible obviously but still like looks banging now and has kept the weight off for the last year or so and looks you know in in better shape every time you've seen her clearly got the the sparkle back in her eyes and now she's celebrating actually which i didn't know this courtesy of her twitter that she's one year sober one year sober so big up ari lennox man she says i'm one year sober from alcohol today i love you all and she did this post here on twitter as well with the pictures of her um in this amazing sparkly dress with a midriff out and her jeans on and i think the funny thing is about ari lennox i think most people when you lose weight ever since she's lost weight she's got into fantastic shape she never not not shows her midriff she lets niggas know hey I've, I've i'm snatched you know what i mean she's never not reminding people online that she does a, definitely looks trim and shit so i can't really blame her because i think i think i've said this before when it, even when it comes especially when it comes to guys i think one of the greatest things you can do to yourself apart from buying new shoes and all this sort of nonsense one of the greatest makeovers you can give yourself is losing like 10 to 20 pounds that will really change everything about the way you stand the way you carry yourself it'll open you up to wearing different things and whatnot things will just look different on you well, losing weight really is the biggest thing you can do in terms of glowing up as opposed to like you know getting work done and all this sort of crazy shit like honestly it does really improve a lot of the things um that you want to wear so i mean since then has kind of reminded us all the time that she's hot girl hot girl hot girl hot girl so great to see her one year sober legitimately it seems like because you can tell via the evidence um because it's clear in it somebody like this when they say they're one year sober you can tell by looking at her right because she's fucking glowing everywhere and then when you hear someone like Bert Kreischer mentioned, he's fucking, you know, doing 32 days without alcohol and you look at his face and he still looks like a red tomato, you can clearly see that he's lying. You know what I mean? It's pretty evident to see in the body because the body doesn't lie. So big up Ari Lennox for um, one year sobriety because I can only imagine how hard that must have been um, to do that, especially in the music industry, right? Because I got a feeling, she would never probably admit it because she's still in the music industry now because she's independent. But I have a feeling that, the reason why she was probably crashing out was because of all the stress the music industry brings, right? Trying to basically get your career up, um, trying to be relevant, trying to get a hit record, trying to tour, make music. Even now, she's getting a lot of pushback and a lot of criticism because she was on tour with Rod Wave. Um, and, you know, myself included, I think that was a really bit of a strange link up, right? Her to be supporting Rod Wave on tour. Um, but obviously that's where her kind of career is at and she's maybe trying to branch out and maybe touch a new audience. And one show, I remember watching a video clip of her, she was performing on stage and some fucking idiot threw something at her on stage. Don't, it's a kind of a trend now, you know, everyone that performs live, they get stuff thrown at them. But, you you know, you wouldn't imagine somebody like an R&B songstress, like, you know, um, Ari Lennox would like, elicit a feeling of somebody chucking a bottle at her. But she, you know, it happened. But I think she's changed a bit attitude-wise because I think the next show that she did, she came on stage wearing a fucking motorcycle helmet, like kind of leaning into the meme and the joke of it. So I think she's clearly, you know, I think the sobriety and the, the kind of whatever it is that she's doing in terms of internal work and health and shit has definitely made her chill out and mellow out a bit as well. But 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if she admitted that the reason why she turned to drink is because of the music industry. And that goes to show you how toxic the music industry is, that it would make you an alcoholic and it would make you get to the point where you're fucking having crash outs on fucking airplanes and stuff and getting chucked off of them. Like, it's absolutely toxic, that place. But what can you do? So big up her. And then she did post a statement here down below talking about the entire things. So I want to read to you here a little caption basically explaining um, her journey. I'm going to read to you now. It's on the screen. Let's get it up here. Let's read this for you. What does it say? It says, it was 7 a.m. and I poured myself, uh, no, and I poured me a full glass of Chardonnay um, in preparation for connecting flights. I just finished attending an award show the night before. You see, drinking was my ritual to combat my immense fear of flying. Wow, man. To be honest, that's what Bert says, isn't it? There's a lot of people out there that really are scared of flying to the point where they're going to get smacked to go on a flight. It's like, Jesus. But I guess this, what's the worst of the two? Taking the Xanax, sleeping pill to to like alleviate your fears or getting really drunk what's the what's the worst out of those two i guess maybe taking a xanax probably and you could probably you know maybe i don't know but jesus man those are those are some two poisons that you're picking there to alleviate those fucking fears i got to lax and i drank another glass of wine at an irish pub nothing nothing good ever happens at an irish pub um then i helped myself to some more, more wine on a plane then I landed in Detroit. I was so hammered that I didn't even check to see what time my next flight was. Thank God. Got me another humongous glass of wine. I'm talking a big bowl glass. It's actually crazy that they can sell you, you know, that kind of wine in a fucking airport anyway, no? Isn't that kind of wild that they actually allowed that, thinking about it? You, like, you're going on a plane. You're going to be however thousands of, you know, um, what do you call it, miles up in the air in a fucking tube in the fucking sky with other strangers and shit and here you are smashed you might put every, everybody's life in danger honestly man jesus christ i was so hammered i didn't even check with see your flight i'm talking a big bowl of glass um i went to a random gate and asked a woman where my next flight was and she sweetly confirmed that i missed it i remember feeling so sad and defeated thank god that next flight let the, the flight left me it was about to give no fly list shorty. I wandered off into a seemingly empty area of the airport in my cute jacket and bag. I blacked out sitting on a counter height bistro table, completely by myself and vulnerable. I woke up extremely unwell, clothes tainted with EMT surrounding me, worrying about what I might have taken. I told them I was just alcohol. Just alcohol could have killed me. I had many guardian angels watching over me that day. Thank God there was nobody filming. I pray and hope. Wow, man. She was in the airport, completely battered and bruised. That's the thing about not being super famous because she's not Summer Walker famous. She's still well known, but as R&B singers go, she's not super famous just yet. So it's probably a good thing that her career hasn't really taken off because people would have definitely been there filming. So it's a good thing it didn't happen. Um, it, those beautiful EMT employees were angels. They wheeled me into a wonderful hotel in the airport. My headache was excruciating. I woke up the next morning to catch a rescheduled flight and got drunk again. While there was many crazy nights like this, I kept telling myself... I can't, I'll keep them to myself. I decided December 18th, 2022 would be the day I got clean. Uh, you know what I realized after one year of sober flights? I never needed alcohol to get through the flight. I thought I needed alcohol to escape my reality and to cope and needed an excuse to drink and not feel the pain of everyday life and trauma. It was numbing vaca vac it was, it was an It was my numbing vacation to avoid my purpose and my truth. Yeah, that's what you feel like, isn't it? I think I've had those uh, that those kind of realizations sometimes when I've had those crazy sessions. It's like, are you just kind of avoiding the work that needs to be done? Are you avoiding kind of, you know, really doubling down on your work and really focusing on what needs to be done to kind of get yourself where you need to get to? Because that's sometimes a good thing about drinking, isn't it? It kind of makes you black out and it kind of makes all your problems go. It kind of makes all your problems go away temporarily. Obviously, they're still going to be there in the morning. But for that moment, it really does make your problems go away and it makes life a bit simple because all you want is another drink. All you want is another drink. All you want is a laugh, maybe a cigarette, but all you want is another drink. It makes life completely simple. So maybe there is that in there. I really do feel that line that she says there. I needed no excuse. I need an excuse to drink and not feel the pain of everyday life and to fake pretend that I was not. A, I, needed, so let me, let me, I needed an excuse to drink and not to feel the pain of everyday life and trauma. It was my numbing vacation to avoid my purpose and my truth. It was my numbing vacation to avoid my purpose and truth. Bloody hell, what a bar. I needed it to take, so I needed it to fake pretend like I was in control. And alcohol was fun until it wasn't. It was fun until it was trauma, the drama, the hangovers, being taken advantage of. Ooh. 
Is she is she is she alluding to what I think she's alluding to? Cause that's the thing, like being a woman and being a drunk is very dangerous, isn't it? Imagine the places you're gonna be in drunk and being a woman is gonna be really dangerous and really different to how a guy experiences being a drunk because of the guys that would want to take advantage of you in that state because there are loads of dudes that do that loads of dudes that do that like the, the, that's one thing i really do give my oh, that's one thing i'd really kind of not give myself credit for that's one thing i give credit to god or the universe and just my upbringing that i had a good group of friends that i grew up with um even though my group of friends were like you know really kind of um laddie in that we'd go out on weekends on the pool literally we'd play football in the mornings and we'd go out to shopping centers and try and fucking chat up girls and get numbers and shit right and it was really a baptism of fire and it'll be horrible and you'd feel embarrassed and shy and you'd fucking especially if you get rejected right it was fucking awful especially in front of your friends everyone laughing and shit but it taught me a lot obviously again it kind of gave me confidence and and riz and game and whatnot to approach women but one thing was i give those guys credit for is that we were a group of guys that always never took pride in the whole like you know getting with a girl when she's drunk and shit there'd be plenty of occasions when we were out in house parties and raves where we were maybe talking to those girls or we were with a group of girls and we were hanging out together us group and their group and then maybe you know during the night um the girls got way too hammered as girls sometimes do and instead of maybe trying to ramp it up most of us would actually chip in together pay money to send a girl in a cab back home and not even try and come back to hers or anything many many a times we've done that or waiting at the bus stop with them until their bus came and shit and i'm glad that that was a thing like i never grew up with a group of guy friends who made it a win because there's some group of guys there's groups of guys and guys in general who think in their head it's a win a win's a win so if the girl's hammered if she's fucking not hammered it doesn't fucking matter like whatever they can get they fucking take it the kind of guys that you know love to fucking have their hand at the bottom of the girl's arches they're kind of hugging them always asking where's my fucking hug at you know what i mean all those kind of touchy feely guys the ones that always turn every conversation into fucking sex and shit i'm glad i didn't hang up to all those type of dudes because the guys i hanged out with even though they were the ones that were always trying to fucking get the first wine and ask for the number and stuff when it came to actually you know sealing the deal if the person was hammered there was like it was never on like it was a it was a dub completely right off ah oh, man she's drunk like fuck you know what i mean it was like a completely right off there was no like let's follow through no 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 no. just give them money sort them out hang out with them you know fucking go find their friends so they can go home whatever it may be but there was never kind of that attitude of like hey let's try and seal this deal while just take advantage of her while she's not aware and stuff because i think that is incredibly lame and also very 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 creepy like if you're a guy that does that you're definitely should be on some list somewhere for sure um anyway continue um the night terrors the anxiety the regret and the embarrassment see i could never be i could never be a one glass cutie i'm more of a bottle and half kind of a lady jesus that's real i remember actually being on a train with my friend and some we were drinking on the way to a festival and this guy spoke to us who was um sober um he was, he was going through aa and he had one of those token things that they give you to mark how many you know whatever months you're on and stuff and he was talking to us about um, his sobriety a bit and it was funny because he mentioned something like um i think we were talking loudly on a train i think he butted in because we we're talking about drinking and he was like yeah um when i was drinking he was basically saying that how he would get through I think like five bottles a day or something, something stupid like that. And I remember I said something like, oh my God, that's crazy. How could you do that? And then he broke it down pretty well in that he was like, oh, my wife also was drinking, but not as much as I was, but I was just buying. Basically what he was saying is that he was finishing a bottle and a half. His wife would finish a half and then he'd have the other bottle. So he'd always have one. So every time he came back home, I remember, I think he said it basically quite well. He was like, oh, whenever, I think he worked in a, he had a really good job. So I think when he went to lunch, he had like a, maybe a glass of wine. Then when he went, came back home from work, which was really late, maybe nine, because he was, you know, higher up. So he stayed late. Um, he'd have a couple glasses of wine. Maybe on the way back, he might have had a steak dinner with a colleague and stuff and had a wine. So by the time he went back home, he went to blackout and sleep. He'd have the whole bottle before he went to bed, reading over emails and watching TV. And that would be at least one bottle he would do by himself. And then, of course, if he's making dinner with his wife, he'd have another half of a bottle. So he would get through those bottles in a day easily and it would kind of add up to like a huge amount by the end of the month or stuff i was like whoa so yeah the, 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 that's when i realized there were people out there that actually drink for real i thought my little like you know my little kind of sessions where i have like six beers was a lot but there's guys out there that drink like that you know hot one bottle and a half every single day for like the rest of their fucking adult life and stuff it's fucking wild um but it's just you know what's really sad about alcohol it's like un unlike other drugs 
like class A's and stuff, they're probably a little bit more brutal in that, you know, they cut your life short very quickly. Drug, alcohol is like a brutal one because it's like a death by a thousand cuts. It really does kind of damage you very slowly and for a very long time. And by the time you realize it's too, it's too late, you know, that's a really sad thing about alcohol. It really does fuck you up for a very, it's like a slow drip fuck up. Whereas I think the class A and the harder drugs, they kind of kick you over the head super really quickly and you, you know, you end up kind of dying um, fairly soon, especially if you're hammering it super hard. But alcohol, you could probably drink that for, you know, most of your life and then pay the price right at the end, which is brutal, you know? Like there's no kind of warning or <laughs> what's not. It just kind of creeps up on you and shit. Anyway, let's continue. Um, see, I, I could never be a one glass cutie. I'm more of a bottle and a half kind of lady. My toxic relationship with alcohol left me stagnant and closed person and closed eyes and hint and what? She's why can't I read this properly? I'm more of a bottle and a half kind of lady. My toxic relationship with alcohol left me stagnant and closed eyes and hindering my growth and healing. Hindering my ability to overcome fear and I'm no perfect person these days. Although I'm sure you couldn't tell. Um, and by no means am I a perfect flyer. I've had a few panic attacks on flights this year that caused some stress, some stares, but I'm facing this shit. I'm a real one. I'm brave. Even Yo, big up Uche, appreciate you. Your channel has been a constant in my life as I've dealt with and overcame some of these same things. Thanks for doing what you do. I love you, M8. I love you too, Uche. Big up, big up, big up, big up. You're a fucking G. You're a fucking G. Um, and yeah, our chats have always been very illuminating and eye-opening. And I just feel like in general, um, this channel has been odd because um, I kind of started this shit mostly as a self-therapy thing. Because like I, I've said to other people, I think I was had to, a lot of self-talk, a lot of self-chatter, right? Because I don't have any friends and probably I'm a bit of a psycho. So I thought, you know what? Let me just dump all of this stuff into a microphone and hopefully share it with people and hopefully they might like it. And that's basically where it started from. But it was kind of like selfish in that regard because I just wanted to kind of get the voices out of my head and kind of, you know, kind of quote unquote talk to people. And it's just been odd to find so many people out there that have a common that we have the same sort of like experiences you know same sort of like um things that we've kind of grown up with and around and whatnot and we're all kind of spread up spread around the world um and we all kind of share this weird commonality with, with each other and stuff so it's been great to hear some of you guys as well sharing some of your stories um in my comments and whatnot and contacting me on instagram and discord and shit so yeah big up uche love and appreciate you as well and yeah man i just i don't know i don't take any credit for it i just think in general you know there's just more of you amazing people out there than me so it's good to hear that you guys find some relatability in the things that i talk about and that we can all kind of help each other in that regard by just talking shit really and laughing and having some fun and kind of shooting the shit and pointing and laughing at fucking comedians because why the fuck not you know what i mean so big up you big up uche much love to you um let's continue here um, and I'm no perfect person these days, although I'm sure you could tell. And by no means am I a perfect flyer. I've had a few panic attacks this year that caused some stares. And um, but I'm facing this shit. I'm a real one. I'm a br I'm brave even when I'm scared shitless. I text my busy. I text my friends and family my feelings. I use the time in the air to tell them I love them. That's beautiful. I stay busy with educational apps and sims. I know my limits and boundaries of flying. I rarely fly alone smile face thanks to Kima and simone i try my best to avoid collecting flights when i'm scared i practice my breathing techniques and sometimes i get lift i get lift uh let lit off chamomile tea big up her man i pray and talk to god to keep uh, uh god up there i watch babe and cry tears of joy but most excitedly um when i'm scared of stress alcohol is no longer my innate solution so beautiful isn't it right i just be ready to land alcohol is no longer my innate solution fucking hell um that'll that will be all i want to sorry um i just be oh jesus christ why can't i do this sorry the lines in this because there's loads of emojis in this making my eyes go crazy i watch babe um but most excitingly when i'm scared or stressed alcohol is no longer my innate solution i just be ready to land that be all i want every time i can visualize my destination so clearly and it calms me it's a miracle i've been running now and what down now that i finally present i'm be, i've been running and now that i'm finally present in it it's truly not that bad i ain't easy but it's all right i'm looking out the damn window often i'm letting these legendary pilots do their thing i'm letting go and i'm letting god beautiful 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 and there's the next one as well one more and we'll continue um 
So I'm posting this little fake deep post on my one year sobriety anniversary. I just knew it would be impossible to sober up if I was still flying. But wow, look at me. I did it. I love you, Courtney. You're so damn strong and fine as hell. God damn. Growing looks um, wonderful on you. Bravery, sexy on you. You go, girl. Thank you to my fans. I love you. When I, when y'all share with me your sober dreams and, f and fates, it makes me so emotional. I'm so proud of you all and I love you all so much. We can do this. Thank you to my family, my friends for keeping me accountable thank you for loving me thank you for being patient with me thank you for everybody of the on the i am sober app baby we're doing it oh, that's awesome there's an app that you can connect with people as well community that's really awesome y'all knew how many times i wanted to give in y'all was so sweet and motivating we powered through um let's keep going follow your heart cheers to another year of being present and growing deeper than ever before one day um at a motherfucking time baby thank you to my fans i love when y'all share with me your sober dreams okay cool we read it already so big up Ari Lennox you're an absolutely G um, amazing to see the growth in her amazing to see her do what she's doing walk the walk talk to talk and I only way to mention this because again I think a lot of people talk about stuff like this and you know flex like they are doing the work but when you actually see someone doing the work the results are evident her whole demeanor has changed her attitude has changed you never really hear her in the news crashing out going crazy as like she did before in the past because she's clearly done a lot of the internal work the hardest thing to do do you know what i mean so big up her for doing it um appreciate her for sharing her journey and being so open about it because again it's no one's business she could just keep this to herself but she did it anyway and hopefully encourages others to sort of like maybe you know maybe do some of that internal work see if they've got issues and kind of solve it because she's done she's definitely a a, a kind of an example of what's solving it looks like and how good it can look on you because she's never looked so good she's never sounded so good and obviously clearly that's coming through the music because i think she's producing some of the best music she's ever put out to be honest and then that also goes against the whole adage of oh you have to be fucked up to be a good musician i don't believe that because i think she's sounding better than she's ever had to be honest in my personal opinion but again what do i know big up our you're a fucking g you're a fucking g